Hi guys, welcome back. This is Professor Hank, and in this video, I'm going to talk to you about multiple inheritance in C++. So let's get started. Um, so multiple inheritance, what is it? Well, multiple inheritance applies to object-oriented programming, and basically what this provides for is the ability for a class to have multiple parent classes, right? So you're not limited to having just a single parent class if you're a child class, right? You can have multiple parents. You can have two, you can have 10, you can have 20, you can have one. Okay, so you can inherit from more than one class. Okay, so to make this happen, <clears throat> you're gonna have to specify in your derived class, in your child class, all of the classes that are your parents, right? So we're gonna need to add some syntax for that and uh, when invoking constructors, we're going to use syntax that's similar to if you only had one class, but um, one parent class, but we're going to have to repeat the constructor for each um, parent, essentially is what we're going to do. We're going to, we're going to put them in series, separated by commas. Okay, and um, the child class, if you are inheriting methods from your parents that have the same name. Let's say that you've got parent class A, parent class B, and both A and B have a method called get, right? Well, in the child class, you're gonna have to deal with that, right? So a couple of different ways you can deal with it. Uh, one is to um, <clears throat> override uh, the inherited methods with, with, with a new method. Another is to use the scope resolution operator to specify exactly which method you mean to use. Um, from within the child class. Okay, so we're gonna go through and look at a sample program. I'll walk you through all of this. And um, yeah, I mean, it's, it's a nice little flexible tool that allows you to build a new class from not just one existing class, but many existing classes, right? This is something that C++ has that Java doesn't. And, um, you know, it's, it's nice in that it gives you more flexibility, but it's also kind of um, a bummer because it makes it can make things more complicated but i think you'll see from the example that it's actually it's it's not that bad okay it's uh, the the syntax is very consistent and the semantics are what you would expect very consistent with um the whole idea right so it's it's very readable very usable okay so let's go take a look at a program okay so let's get to it so i'll make a couple of parent classes right, these won't be my parent classes also known as your base classes and um, <clears throat> I'll create a class named uh, Foo. And it'll just do something, you know, really, 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 really stupid. Uh, just storing an integer. So uh, int x. And we'll give it um, a couple setter and getter methods. So um, how about void set x. Okay. And... Uh, I'll just, you know, set X, as it says. And then we'll have a get method. And that's going to return. It's going to get X. And then we'll have a, a method called print. Okay. And all print will do is uh, print uh, X to the screen. Right. So just something really kind of simple like that. And then uh, we'll have another class called bar. Um, and these, well, like, like I said, these are going to be our um, parent classes, and we'll create a third class that's going to inherit from both of these. Okay, so we'll call this one bar, and just to make it different, we'll uh, have a uh, float variable, and so I'll call this set f, and I'll call this get f, and we'll set f to i, and we'll return f, and then we'll uh, print f, okay? And um, let's include also a constructor, okay? Because uh, I got to show you how the constructors are going to work in the um, child class, right? So uh, we'll have a foo, and um, we'll just initialize x to i, right? Just a stupid little constructor here. And similarly for bar. Okay, so we won't have a default constructor here. We'll have a parameter constructor, but that's okay. Uh, so f equals i. Okay, right, so that should do it. Okay, so those are our two parent classes. So what we're gonna do is, is we're gonna have 
um, a new class, which is going to be the child of foo and bar. So I'll call it class foo bar. Okay, and um, class foo bar won't have any of its own um, variables. Okay, instead, what it'll do is it'll just use the x and the f that it inherits from its parent. Now, in order to specify that we're inheriting from any class, right, we have to put this comma here, and then we have to specify the uh, class access specifier, right? So we'll do public, and then we'll say foo, right? So that right there is, is specifying that foo bar is a foo, right? Okay, fine. So let's just test what we have um, so far. Now, one more thing though, before I do that, right? See how um, foo doesn't have a default constructor? So I'm gonna have to provide a constructor in foo bar that um, invokes the parent constructor in foo. Okay, so um, we'll take a couple of variables in here. We'll call it i and j. And then um, we'll just pass i up. Oops. And we'll, we'll put that second one in there in just a second. We'll pass i up to uh, foo, okay? And then the constructor for foobar uh, won't do anything for right now, okay, at least, okay? So let's just test what we have. Okay, so if I invoke, or if I create an object of foobar, right, I'll call it fb, um, I have to pass it in an integer as an argument, okay? And then uh, I should be able to invoke its um, print method, right? <clears throat> because what's gonna happen is, is the nine is gonna be assigned to i, right? And then that i is gonna get passed up to the constructor that we inherited, right? So then that nine in i is gonna be assigned to x. And so that nine is gonna be in the private variable x inside of class foo. And then I'll call uh, the print method that I inherited from foo, right? And so then that'll call out x. So I should see what nine uh, on the output, right? And so there you go. So, so far so good, but that's only one inheritance, okay? That's only one. We were, foo bar is just a foo. It's not a bar yet. So if we want to, be both a foo and a bar, if we want to have multiple inheritance, if we want to have multiple children, or uh, multiple parents, excuse me, then we have to specify both parents. So public foo, public bar, right? And you can use separate class access specifiers, you know, that you could have one be public, you could have one be private, you could have one protected, the other private, whatever combination that you need for the project that you're working on. Okay, now here's the thing though. Um, now, you know, notice how bar doesn't have a default constructor either. So we're going to have to pass it a value as well. So it's going to be very similar. The syntax is going to be very similar to what we have up here. It's going to be consistent, I should say. Not, maybe not necessarily very uh, similar, but, but consistent. Okay, so let's add to foobar's, um, to foobar's constructor a second parameter. And then... Um, See how there's red there? This is expecting us to invoke two constructors, right? So one for foo and then one for bar. So we'll just put a comma, like I said, consistent. And then we'll have the name of the second constructor, right? And then we'll pass to it uh, J, okay? So that's gonna take care of our foo bar class as far as the constructor goes. Now we have to go back down into main and we have to put some other value into the constructor. Okay, and um, that should be it, right? Wrong, right? Take a look at my print, okay? It says, foobar print is ambiguous, ambiguous. Well, what does that mean? Well, when we invoke print, remember this class foobar, we're now both a foo and a bar, which means that we're inheriting both this print method and this print method. So when you say from foobar, right? When you invoke print on the foobar object, you don't know which one to use, or the compiler doesn't know which print method to use. That's why it's ambiguous. You can't you can't do this, right? So that's what I was saying is that what you have to do is you have to override um, the print methods that you're inheriting, right? So uh, I could put in my own print down here, um, and maybe what I have it do is um, just display 
the contents of both the foo and the bar attributes that I inherited, right? So I could um, display the X and the F. Well, how am I going to do that? Right? You might say, well, just do C at X and um, uh, F, right? That should work, shouldn't it? Right? No, it's not going to work. Why not? Because remember, um, the X and the F, they are private. So the child class can't directly access them like that. If they were protected, it would work, but they're not. They're private. So that's not going to, we're not going to be able to access them directly. They're inaccessible from the children. So what we can do instead is we can just um, use the um, public interface of the um, parent classes. So I can invoke get X and I can invoke get F. So that's what I'll do. Because remember, I inherited both of those. So we'll do get X and we'll do get F. Okay, and then that should work. Right. So uh, let's see here. Oh, it would be useful if I actually invoked my print method, wouldn't it? Herper derp. Let's try that again. Uh, there you go. So there's your nine and your three. Okay. Um, now. Let's go double check. Looks like we've got ourselves a, a bug there, right? Because let's fix it. So teachable moment. So you see how it says three there? Look at my constructor. I put in 3.14, right? So if I'm calling get F, I should be seeing 3.14. That's what I passed into the constructor, right? That's why I passed up to bar, right? So we'll just trace through. Now look at the bar constructor. Oh, wrong data type. It's an int. So that three, when it got passed up to bars constructor, implicit data conversion, right? The uh, 0.14 got chopped off. So let's fix that. And uh, let's also check out get F here, right? Because um, it's still not done yet. You'll see why here in a second. It still says three, you're like, well, what's going on? Why didn't it work? We'll take a look at the return type of get F. It's int, right? So 3.14 is inside of F, but we're returning it as an int ints don't have decimal places. So you got to make sure when you're dealing with data in classes and you're moving stuff around that you've got um, in functions, just functions in general, you have to make sure that, you know, all of your data types, that whole chain of events, so that whole movement of the data um, is correct, unlike what I did initially. So there's the 3.14 and that looks just dandy. Okay. Um, now, let me show you one more thing, use of the uh, scope resolution operator. Okay, and uh, uh, let's see here. Um, let's change the definition of our print. Okay, so what I could do is, is I could invoke um, my parent print methods from within foobar, right? So, you know, I could do something that Initially, it seems like it would look like this, right? Um, but that's kind of problematic because if you think about it, which print are you invoking, right? Are you invoking the one that you inherited from bar? Are you invoking the one you inherited from foo? Um, are you invoking the print within um, foo bar, right? That's, that's problematic. So um, what we have to do is we have to specify Right. And if you over and if you mouse over, here, you can see that it seems to be implying that we're basically making a recursive function with infinite recursion. So what you can do is you can say, no, 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 no. I want to specify whose print I'm interested in. So I want to invoke the print method in my foo parent class. Right. And then after that, I want to invoke the print method in my bar parent class, right? So we can use that scope resolution operator here to specify exactly which method um, that's part of the relationship that you actually want to um, use, either when one or the other that you inherited or maybe one you defined uh, yourself. So let's go ahead and call it or run it, test it. So now you see how it says nine and 3.14. That's because when we invoked um, our print method in main, right? Uh, we executed the print method. There's the definition. First thing that executed was the print method that we inherited from foo, right? So it's C out at X and then ENDL. 
and then we uh, executed the print method that we invoked from or that we inherited from bar <clears throat> and then we see out at f uh, and then end line so there you go right so that's that's that so let me just summarize this right here is our child class i have two parent classes here right one in foo one in bar and now if i want to inherit from both of them i have to specify access specifiers for both parent classes and i have to list the names of both parent classes and you can do this with as many classes as you want if you want to inherit from 10 parent classes then just keep on doing that comma thing just extend your series and uh, when you're setting up your constructor if you have to invoke the parent constructors you just do it in series just like i showed here whether it's two parents or 10 just keep on comma and listing right and then um, if you have ambiguous methods if, if the parent classes have methods that have the same name then a quick fix is just to override um, the method in your child class uh, or do something like this, right? You could also um, access, um, specify which method that you're working with by using that scope resolution operator and uh, the class name, okay? All right, so that's everything I have for you. We'll see you next time. Okay, so that's gonna bring this video to a close. If you felt that the video was useful, please consider giving the video a thumbs up. And if you thought that the video sucked, well, then you've got that thumbs down button as an option as well. If you'd like to see more videos, if you're interested in more content from the channel, feel free to hit that subscribe button. And as usual, if you're a student of mine and you have further questions, feel free to drop me an email or to stop by my office hours. Okay, thanks for watching and we'll see you next time.